Okay, hello everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, nice to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Jan Czerny. I work in Red Hat in a security technologies team and I am a developer on the OpenSCAP project, which is a security compliance tool. And uh, I came to Flock to tell you something about uh, OpenSCAP and also to introduce a new component within the OpenSCAP project, which is called uh, OpenSCAP Daemon. But uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, computer security is a very broad topic and uh, today and yesterday we have uh, had a lot of talks uh, which touch the security somehow. But uh, from the most high level point of view, we can say that uh, safe systems or secure systems, they uh, don't contain vulnerabilities and they are also configured in a way that they don't expose any weaknesses. And our tool called OpenSCAP is, uh, is able to detect both of those uh, vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And, uh, sorry, uh, first let's start with those vulnerabilities. Every software has a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, the good news is that uh, some of those vulnerabilities have been already found uh, and the uh, fixes were made and uh, the details are publicly available. But uh, the bad news is that uh, attackers uh, tries to find some systems that uh, run without those patches installed. So they would like to uh, they would like to misuse those exploits which are already publicly available. So, uh, some of those vulnerabilities are well known, they have even fancy names, you, you have uh, definitely heard about shell chalk and venom, and uh, so how can we detect that uh, our system is affected by uh, one of those known vulnerabilities? Basically, we can compare uh, our the versions of our installed packages with a uh, list of uh, list of packages provided by the vendor. Uh, so we know in which version of the particular package uh, the patch was uh, merged in. And if we have an older version, it means that we have installed. Uh, we have uh, on our system a vulnerable package, uh, so uh, we need to update it. And uh, this was about vulnerabilities. And the second thing that I mentioned is the configuration. Um, the system must, uh, must be configured or should be configured in a way that it uh, prevents a lot of uh, security issues. This uh, includes uh, lot of things, for example, you, uh, you sh should have SE Linux enabled, you shouldn't run some uh, protocols like Telnet which are not considered secure, or uh, you shouldn't allow your users to log in with, with, uh, without a password, or uh, there are many recommendations, many recommendations, and there is no uh, dogmatic guidance. Uh, uh, this uh, secure configuration uh, really depends on the workload of, on, of the, or, sorry, or on the usage of the system. So uh, there are much more, uh, sorry, there are many security guidances for a different purpose. And how can we, uh, how can we uh, <coughs> How can we check that uh, our system is configured in line with any, any of those guidances? Basically, you will have to browse all of the configuration files and check uh, which services are turned on and which are disabled and uh, do that, uh, do a lot of stuff to, to audit the computer. I will ask you a question. Would you like to do that manually? 
definitely not. And that's why we have uh, Open SCAP. Open SCAP uh, is a security co compliance tool. It provides both configuration scanning and vulnerability scanning of uh, your system. Open SCAP is already a stable project. Uh, we have started to develop it in Red Hat uh, seven years ago, but uh, uh, Open SCAP is a scanner tool. It provides a command line tool uh, called OSCAP, uh, which uh, has uh, which can scan your system. And uh, OpenSCAP is of course available in Fedora, so you can install this package and you will get the OSCAP tool. But uh, having a scanner is not enough because you need also some rules or uh, we say security policies. And uh, those uh, security policies are input for OpenSCAP for the scanner. And those security policies are a uh, machine-readable implementation of uh, the security guidances. Uh, there are also some uh, standardized uh, security guidances. For example, if your server or your, your computer needs to process payments of uh, using credit cards, then it needs to follow the security guidance uh, called PCIDSS, the Payment Card Industry Security uh, Data Security Standard, and uh, there are many of many others, de depending on the purpose. And uh, those guidances are usually some thick books with a lot of words, but uh, we can uh, convert them or implement them using the ESCAP format. ESCAP stands for a Security Content Automation Protocol and uh, it's a standard used in this area to uh, write checks, to write benchmarks, to write rules. So uh, ESCAP documents are very huge XML files and I will ask you, would, would you like to develop some huge XML file? No, definitely you wouldn't. Uh, but there are some crazy guys who do that and uh, they uh, develop the ESCAP Security Guide Project. ESCAP Security Guide Project is a set of open source security policies. It provides uh, security policies in ESCAP format, therefore machine readable and can be, uh, they can be used by open ESCAP. And also it provides uh, human readable uh, HTML guides so you can uh, read uh, why a particular rule is good to follow or uh, why a particular policy is good to follow. And it also, con the ESCAP security guide uh, also contains uh, the so-called uh, remediation scripts. Uh, those are scripts uh, which can fix your system. If you, your system uh, don't follow a particular rule or don't comply a particular rule, uh, you can run those scripts yeah, and those scripts will uh, fix the particular thing so then you will pass. And uh, ESCAP Security Guide provides uh, benchmarks for various operating operation systems, uh, of course Fedora, RL, and also um, for some applications like Firefox and Chromium, and those uh, benchmarks uh, implement those security guidances. And the uh, ESCAP Security Guide project uh, is available in many dis uh, distributions. On Fedora you can also install it, and this is a screenshot from the HTML guide. We say uh, we have uh, the groups of rules, and here is uh, one rule. And this is what what you can read. Uh, why this is this rule? Uh, why this rule requires uh, that uh, you shouldn't uh, log directly? And uh, there is. This is a very simple remediation scheme, but we have also some more complex, just to fit the screen. And 
Okay. Um, and uh, to each of those rules, uh, there is a corresponding SCAP, uh, SCAP uh, document uh, or SCAP check, which uh, uh, which can be uh, evaluated by Open SCAP. So, if you want to, so now we have uh, the security policies. We have the scanner, and we could start scanning. Actually, uh, it would be nice, uh, or it would be better to start uh, with SCAP one mesh because it's a uh, graphical application which allows you to scan in a, uh, in a in a few easy steps. And uh, this application uh, can scan both uh, local systems and uh, remote systems using SSH. And uh, it provides uh, it provides uh, nice reports and uh, also machine readable results. So. Uh, a scapular bench can be installed uh, also on Fedora. I have it on my laptop, so I will show you that we have a scapular bench. Now uh, it installs the SCAP security guide as a dependency. So uh, since I am using uh, Fedora, I will choose the benchmark for Fedora. And here is the profile, which means uh, that. Uh, uh, which means a particular security policy. We have a mu much more of them for RHEL and for CentOS. Uh, Fedora is uh, here some for uh, testing purposes. And uh, I will choose the standard sec system security profile because it's the shortest. Mm -hmm. So uh, the demo will not be so long. I will click on scan. It will ask me, it will ask me for uh, my root password. And it has started to scan my computer. Uh, here are those rules, and it takes uh, uh, each rule, runs uh, OpenSCAP, uh, browses the system, and tries to verify whether we are uh, my system is in line with that rule or. Uh, that fulfills this rule. So uh, the important thing to mention is that we are checking the configuration. For example, if we will have some rule that uh, if we will have some rule that will check for whether SE Linux is enabled and uh, we have configured it correctly. Uh, sorry. We haven't configured that correctly in our configuration file. It is turned off. But uh, before the before running the scan, we started it. It will still uh, report that we failed that rule because uh, it is um, trying to scan the persistent configuration and not some temporary settings. You know. So it has finished, and uh, now I will show you the report where we can see some details. Maybe I should increase the increase the font size. Is that okay? So this is the report of OpenSK. Uh, here is some disclaimer at the beginning. Not so much interesting. Here it becomes a little more interesting. There are some metadata and here you can see that we have uh, checked for nine rules. Five of them passed uh, for failed, so we have 58% uh, uh, successful. And uh, here there is a table of those rules with a detail uh, detailed results. I will show you, for example, here it, my system uh, failed on this rule. Login to accounts with empty password impossible. And if I click on it, it will show me 
again this uh, this first part comes from the escape security guide and this second part down here comes from my system and you can see that uh, it's uh, the rule said that we shouldn't have in this configuration file that uh, string but it found uh, a violating item that in that configuration file on my system that it has found this so uh, the rule was not fulfilled so uh, those details can be displayed also for each other rule uh, but I uh, will not show you now. Instead, I will continue with the presentation because uh, we have uh, seen that we have uh, run um, a scapboard bench, but the problem is that uh, we have run it only once, but uh, the security set, uh, the settings or the configuration can can be easily changed. The system administrator can change it. Uh, I don't know. Every day when he uh, tries to enable a new application or install some new software or uh, just changes something, so he uh, it, uh, today he can pass every rule, but uh, after a week our system uh, can be considered unsecure. So we would like to uh, we would like to do the scan on, uh, let's say, on a daily basis or continuously. Uh, we would like to schedule a scan and uh, uh, let let the let some have uh, some service which will does which will do the job uh, automatically. So uh, we don't have to run a stop workbench every day. So. Uh, from, for this reason, we need a continuous management. We have introduced uh, a new component within our ecosystem, which is called OpenSCAP Daemon. What is OpenSCAP Daemon? Is, uh, it is a project that allows automated continuous security management. Um, the work on, on this project has started, oh, sorry, started last year. And it's a small, uh, basically it's a small tool written in Python which uh, leverages the OpenStack library. So, uh, how does the Open, how does the OpenStack daemon work? Uh, it is a system service. It runs in background, and uh, it has some uh, event schedule or event calendar and exec it executes scanning of uh, our security policies according to that uh, schedule. It has integrated result storage, so the results of the scan are accumulated within the daemon and uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can read uh, them afterwards uh, when you have time so uh, the daemon is the system service and you can communicate with it uh, using either OSCAP is it's a command line tool to manage the daemon or uh, it has also GitHub interface so uh, it, uh, we have the GitHub interface because we would like to integrate with other tools for example, uh, now it's possible to, it will be possible to integrate it, let's say, cockpit. And it is important to mention that uh, OpenSCAP daemon is not only for scanning your local system or local server. It can, as well as SCAP workbench, it can uh, scan remote machines over SSH. But what is uh, very interesting, it can do an offline scan uh, of virtual machine and Docker images and containers. What does an offline scan mean? Offline scan mean uh, that you don't have to install any agent inside the container. You don't uh, basically you don't touch the container. You mount the uh, you mount the container of the virtual machine image uh, to the host file system and uh, you scan uh, 
the file system read only from outside. OpenSCAP daemon is uh, available in Fedora and you can install it and run the service and we also provide a containerized version it is on a Docker Hub uh, this image called OpenSCAP daemon and uh, this, is, uh, this does the same job but is inside the container uh, sorry. Uh, as I told you, you can manage uh, the, the daemon and communicate with the daemon using uh, OSCAP DCLI, which is Command Line Manager. It, it's supposed to be an interactive tool because uh, the OSCAP Command Line tool was quite complicated, so we would like to avoid like typing long IDs and uh, um, copy with some results files and uh, some complicated avoid uh, in simple words avoid some complicated stuff that was there. Uh, so uh OSCAP is UI it's supposed to create uh, create a task in a few easy steps. I will try to show you that on my system uh, there is OpenSCAP daemon running and uh, I will show you how to create a new task using the command line interface uh, OSCAP D CLI create task and I will run it uh, in the interactive mode uh, Sorry, <laughs> uh, task create, task create, I will choose some title, here now it's asked for target, if I leave it is empty, it will scan my laptop, uh, but I can specify a URI of a, a container or a virtual machine or a remote server. And now it detects that uh, we have uh, a SCAP security guide installed and uh, uh, it allows me to choose, uh, I will choose Fedora content, Fedora security policy. Uh, here it asks for a tailoring file which is a way how you can uh, customize the security policy. Like if you wanted to set exceptions, like I know that this yeah, is yeah. Set, but don't alert. Exactly. And uh, so I will leave this empty because I don't want to tailor it now. And uh, here are again the profiles that we have seen in the SCAP workbench. So I will choose again those uh, standard profile. And uh, here is the remediation which will run the mm, uh, remediation scripts uh, after the scan word. Uh, where the remediation scripts are available. So I will I will not do that now. And I will schedule it, let's say, I can specify the time. Uh, if I uh, leave it this empty, it, will, it should start now. And here I can specify how often I would like to repeat the scan, for example, every six hours. And it has created the task, it is now, it is disabled now, but I can enable it using this command. And now uh, it will, uh, it is the, in, in the, it is in the calendar of events and uh, it will uh, does the job without my uh, attendance. So I have Using OSCAP D C L I, you can uh, you can display which tasks are here on my system. I have like I have created. Uh, I was playing with that. I have created a lot of tasks. For example, we will try the task number 
c'est and here are the results that it was run twice uh, and the evaluation error means that uh, my system is not compliant with the security policy that I choose when I was creating the task so I can display the report, the same report as uh, was uh, as was generated by uh, ESCAP Workbench. ESCAP this year I result. Now it wants the ID of the task, the uh, ID of the run, and I can save it to some file. And display it using And it uh, generated the uh, report from the storage of results, of, from the integrated storage of results. And now, uh, me as a sysadmin, I can browse the report. It is very like similar as we have seen with ESCAP Workbench. So. So that was the usage of the OSCAP demo in a short demo. But another reason why we started to develop the OpenSCAP demo was that feature that I told you about that it can scan uh, containers and uh, it can scan the images from outside because uh, we, we wanted to integrate our OpenSCAP uh, solution with Project Atomic. Uh, Project Atomic is a tool for managing containers and there is one problem with containers. Uh, uh, each container uh, has inside a set of binaries but uh, those binaries can contain uh, vulnerabilities and uh, uh, each container has a different, may have a different set of those binaries and so we would like to somehow identify that our uh, container is vulnerable or our image is vulnerable so uh, we could use OpenSCAP somehow scan it, uh, scan the image or scan the container and uh, identify uh, whether a container is vulnerable or not and perhaps stop the container or update it based on the results. So uh, that's why with uh, Atomic Faults we have developed uh, Atomic Scan command. Atomic Scan uh, can uh, scan your containers. Uh, it uses OpenSCAP for doing that. Uh, the nice thing is uh, that uh, uh, Atomic Scan can uh, automatically determine uh, uh, which operating system is inside the container or which operating system is the container based on and uh, then it uh, finds the appropriate uh, feed of CVEs it means the uh, list of packages which are vulnerable. Currently, Red Hat provides uh, CD feeds for uh, RHEL 6 and RHEL 7. So if you have containers for, uh, based on RHEL 6 or RHEL 7, you can uh, use Atomic Scan uh, and uh, do the offline scan and uh, identify whether you your whether your uh, container is vulnerable or not. Yeah, I will show you that I will try to run some container. I have some old image of rel 66 <laughs> and uh, let's say something simple. S sleep one hour. 
Yeah, and now I can use atomic scan, atomic scan and the ID, container ID, and it will start the OpenSCAP daemon and uh, identify that uh, my container is based on RHEL 6 and it should report me whether there are some vulnerabilities or not. Most likely they will, there will be some because it's a RHEL 66 container. This uses the uh, offline scanning capability. So actually it uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't touch uh, the container like uh, doesn't make, uh, it does not make any changes inside the container. Uh, we should get results in a while. <laughs> Does it have to be a running container or can it be a container image? It can be a container image, yes. The same way as I uh, run the atomic scan, you can uh, provide the ID or the name of the image. So... Yeah, container image, running containers, stop containers. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what's happening now. <laughs> it's like the log. Yeah. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Anyway, it, <laughs> anyway, it should show something. The feet of, uh, I, uh, so, uh, that's a good question. The feet of, uh, the open stuff is Mm, provided in a container. So, if uh, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, it worked uh, an hour ago. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> anyway, how, how is uh, supposed to how is it supposed to work? Uh, the open stuff is inside the container. This container is called open stuff and it's somewhere in the Red Hat registry. Red Hat registry is something like the Docker Hub, but it provides images of containers uh, uh, officially built by Red Hat. So, it, when this, uh, this image, uh, 7 of Telescap is not present on your system, it will, uh, download, it will download it automatically if you run atomic scan for the first time. And uh, it works like that, that atomic mounts the container that you want to scan. And uh, it mounts it inside the OpenSCAP container and open a stop does the offline scan and it should produce a result uh, that we will see uh, which uh, packages are vulnerable and uh, what CVs are in those packages and it should <laughs> it should uh, display also links to our Elatas uh, so uh, the sysadmin can uh, decide whether he wants to somehow uh, update the container or, uh, for example, uh, whether the vulnerability is uh, very serious that he wants to disable the container and don't run it. So uh, we have now the vulnerability scan of the containers and images. Uh, but we would like to uh, also evaluate the configuration of uh, of the containers. For example, there are also some good practices. For example, uh, you shouldn't run uh, SSHD inside the container, or uh, uh, you should 
included like uh, set uh, additional capabilities, that additional Linux capabilities for the container that you don't really need. So uh, we are now working on some things like uh, a profile for systems inside the container within the SCAP security guide project. So uh, uh, there will be some uh, security policy for systems in running inside containers. And there uh, is, we have also started to develop a uh, uh, benchmark in SCAP security guide to protect the container host to provide some uh, uh, configuration setting, uh, configuration recommendations for uh, the Docker demon and also sorry, uh, this will, this should be also uh, used in a project atomic in the atomic scan command and actually uh, atomic scan command uh, is not aimed only for uh, vulnerability scanning or security scanning you can have uh, uh, different scanners uh, it's not, o no, not only open scan currently you can provide for example an image with a black bag and it should scan the container using that uh, and uh, you can sh dis display the list of the available scanners using atomic scan uh, atomic scan this, this list now there is only open scan as far as I know but it would be nice if there will be some configuration scan and if there will be some more things and uh, since this is a uh, federal contributors conference uh, we are looking for people who are uh, who would like to contribute to our experts on container security on on uh, on whatever with uh, which uh, has something to do with uh, security compliance or scanning, and uh, we would really welcome contributions. Uh, you can start with reading our nice new website at open open scoutorg It's a really colorful a lot of information there. All our source codes of all the projects that I mentioned today, including SCAP Security Guide and uh, OpenSCAP Demon, is are available on GitHub at our GitHub repository. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can send, uh, if you have any questions, you can send it on the mailing list. And you can uh, join our uh, OpenSCAP channel on Freenode. Uh, that's everything for me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, do you have any questions, Ben? Um, so I've been asked by like, a lot of people pretty excited about this. So the question is, is uh, if, uh, if there will really be a state uh, file available for uh, for the containers or is this something that inside the containers? Not yet. Uh, we have discussed it uh, several times. It's definitely a good idea, uh, but uh, it's not possible yet because we don't have uh, the appropriate for our file. There are some differences between uh, systems uh, like running on bare metal or on virtual machines and uh, systems running in the containers. So uh, here we would like welcome contributions into a staff security guide. Okay, any other question? Should be great if it's your policy for the demo. Yeah, that's a good thing. Do you want the demon inside the container that's totally locked down so the demon's not allowed to escape the time? Yeah. Yeah.
My first talk in English is very well. You did the best word for the language we speak normally. Czech. Czech. I like to check. You did better in English than I would do in Czech. Thank you. Hey, so what time is the video? My first talk. I just realized that. 15 minutes. Perhaps I should stop here. Perhaps I should stop here.